Hello and welcome back to another video of my home cockpit. I will give you now a short status update what I have accomplished since the last video and that was quite a lot. Um, if you can see on the right hand side the side walls from the first officer as well the side walls from the captain side are finished. The complete blanking to this side uh, to the right side was done as well to the left side this window was closed, so you cannot get any distractions. Headset uh, was mounted for the flight, for the ATC, and as well a nice uh, handset microphone with a push to talk button, which is fully functional, uh, that you can talk while you're in cruise or on ground when you don't need the headset um, to be involved. Um, a small other addition to amplifiers, uh, one for the ATC voice that we can get uh, out of the speakers uh, above our head. We can switch this off and now you can hear the second one. Okay, what you hear now was the cabin announcement. This is done with a second amplifier. And on the back, I have to turn the back. To switch the light off, maybe uh, you can see there a small uh, black round uh, speaker, which are installed on the left and on the right hand side. That's where our cabin sounds and APU sounds, etc. are coming from to add more reality in the cockpit. Um, another addition is the new flight management computer. It's from Open Cockpits, it's the version 3. Um, and the nice thing is when you fly in dark uh, or in night, uh, it now has a fully functional background lightning where you can tune also the background lights to go off and go on which makes it very easy and very convenient uh, in nighttime flying as well as in daytime in the in the room where I'm. it's it's quite dark and this is as it should be. Um, on our left hand side on the captain's side uh, is the tiller as well that is mounted. It's also from open cockpits with an auto center function with some very heavy springs in it. Um, yeah, to turn the light on and off, and I mean uh, the chart light from the left and uh, from the right side, from the first officer side, each pilot has an, uh, yeah, a panel where you can switch the light on and off. So I've redone the complete lightning of the cockpit, and just uh, because I had there a spare place and a potentiometer, I connected this one. And you can now dim the instrument displays. So the captain from the captain side, you can dim with one the primary flight displays. You can dim your CDU as well as the the uh, upper ICAS. And on from the right hand side, from the first officer side, you can dim, of course, uh, respective the, the other sides, the flight uh, a primary flight displays from the first officer, the CDU. Uh, which is now switched uh, the version 1 uh, back and uh, the ICOS screen. Then I have got another, uh, it's not an addition, it's an improvement what I already got um, in my pedestal panel, the ACOS printer, I will show you this in one minute. And another nice feature, that's, uh, that's a panel from actually a real uh, Boeing 737. Um, so that's, I think that's the oldest parts that are built in the cockpit. Uh, there's timestamp uh, in, uh, on, on the switches, which says 1981. So quite old and it flew in a real aircraft. So um, those switches are not real, but these ones are the, the real ones. As well as I did the functions, I uh, had to do a lot of cabling. I can take it out there. 
maybe to get um, to get you a view of the cabling situation there. So quite a lot of cables uh, for those small switches, but they are doing now absolutely fine. And uh, we'll demonstrate this to you now. As you have in a real scene, you can turn the volume up and down. For example, if you want to have the identification code of the NUF1, you can push it now. Okay, maybe we are too far away now, so I have to search another one. Search uh, 114, nine zero. So we are now 20, uh, 30 miles away from this NDP and as you can hear the Morse identifier from the NAV1 uh, and you can turn also the volume to go louder or to turn it lower. If you push it away, let's wait for the next one. But you can see it's really working. It's disabled again. You can do the same thing, of course, for the NAV2. You can do the same thing for the for the RDF1 and for the markers. So you have now fully functional outer and inner markers um, that we are we are talking about. So outer marker, middle marker, inner marker. You can change uh, the the volume of it as well. I've implemented this only for the uh, first office uh, for the correction for the captain side, not for the first officer side. Um, yeah, as ninety nine percent, then I'm flying alone, so I have no need for this. Um, yesterday we did three flights or with a friend of mine. It was really great. It was the first time doing really. In this setup now, uh, a fully functional flight, and it yeah was quite fun, and hope we do it more often then. Um, yeah, and now to the Acres printer. It's located in a pedestal here. So if we, for example, we are on a flight to Vienna, we want to know, um, just give me the weather for Vienna, so I can input the Vienna, the action weather sent, please. I get an uh, Acres uplink, I check the weather, and I have the weather there, and I can now turn on print. And let's see, the paper is coming out. And it's not only a paper, of course. Of course, you have the weather information provided by Active Sky. Uh, actual for Vienna variable, three nodes, QNH1025. View clouds at 4,000. Um, but that's not all. I think you know uh, the Prosim utils uh, quite well. And I want to demonstrate you this one that's quite an interesting. No, do it on the other side that you can see it's also it's also functional and working. Um, request landing. So we will be landing in uh, Vienna. Um, landing runway will be the runway 11. Confirm. Um, just get the auto updating weather information. As we saw on our printout variable, temperature 26 degrees, wind speed 3 knots, QNH 1025. Our landing weight, I have to uh, search this on our PFPX. Uh, landing weight plant is uh, 62.7 tons. So, switch back to the first one. As you can see, the, the information is fully replicated, as it should be. Um, 62.7. Oh, it's uh, quite a landing weight that I had uh, from my first flight before. Landing mode, you can choose auto land, manual land, of course, we do a manual land. Flaps 30, flaps 15, flaps 40. If you check, check uh, flaps 15, it says abnormal. So flaps 30, auto braking, we leave it to. 
Um, ATIs, we don't need air conditioning, of course, but this temperature is on. So let's say a request. What happens in the background? Um, pros and utils are not calculating the uh, performance calculation in TopCat on the system where uh, pros and utils is running. And you have there all your information. If we choose print again, that's the real good thing. You get the full printing. So you have, to, it's no need to add it anymore to the PFPX information for what? You can uh, uh, update it as you're approaching your, your destination airport. So we have the our flight number Austrian 130 with the Boeing 737 uh, Oscar Echo Lima November Sierra. Uh, we made an in-flight calculation for runway 113, flap 30, air condition on, and the ice off. Landing manual for x 2 one 1025, winds variable 3 knots, temperature 26. Our landing uh, weight maximum 79.9.7 tons. Our actual landing weight is uh, planned 62.7 tons. Do not exceed the structure landing weight of 66.3 tons. We have our approach speed, our reference speed. We have the landing distance available to run with 3,500 meters. Um, we would need actual 2,200, uh, correction, 2,300 meters. And of course we have the uh, calculation uh, margin of 1,100 meters. And the nice thing is you have attached there on the back uh, on the end, uh, your um, missed approach procedure climbs right ahead to block NDB 408 to be set on the NDB, then climbing 5000 and holding on a circling 294 degrees on a left turn. So you have all the information you need and to get the uh, approach in set, so flaps 30. Uh, we don't have a runway selected there right now, but we can, can do this runway 1 1 for the uh, arrival. So we have the, also the runway 1 1. We have the, as you know from Posim, it's well the frequency. And the last edition, and then I'm really finished uh, for this video now. Um, not edition, the, the things I've changed. All the radios, COM, NAV, NAV, ADF, and TCAS are now uh, working. Uh, not with the SEOC module uh, program, um, they are working uh, fully with the SEO code. So if you switch the battery off, all the uh, uh, indicators goes off, etc. And with a small trick I performed and I manipulated the, the SEOC script that I have uh, two RDFs now. So that means the RDF frequency that we are setting on the right hand side, for example, the uh, no, switch the right one to to the left one, 310, and leave the 165.15. And as you can see, it's uh, replicated into ProSim. So we have it on our ND with the ADF, the left one. And as soon as I turn the, the standby frequency, it replicates the information back uh, to the RDF2. So you can uh, have two RDFs, which is uh, sometimes very helpful. Uh, for, for some airports um, to get this one working with only one RDF module. Yeah. This uh, concludes now my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will continue now my flight uh, to Vienna.